Welcome to Mercerman Seeds Cup of Joe. On this episode, we update you on test plot results from the northern Midwest. When you think white mold, think about our seed treatment and the protection we offer with our starting line seed treatment. Ben highlights our Monroe 2337E soybean and Julie 11 wheat varieties. Here's some phenomenal yields. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe. Today we have our regulars, Ben, Lynn, and Turk, and we're going to start with Lynn. Yeah, so this week I want to talk a little bit uh, about the north. We've been getting some test plots that's come in and some field averages from up there, and I know uh, get a little guilty on talking about Lee County and South, so we're going to give the guys up north a little bit of love here. So um, the one that has really stood out to me and getting text messages and, and plot data from, from Brian and, and the folks up north as well, uh, the, the Chickasaws seem to be doing extremely well up there. Um, getting field averages in the, the 80s, um, low to mid 80s on uh, acres that I would say of consequence, 55, 80, 150 acres I think was the one. So uh, that's the one I want to talk about first, uh, it, one that's really jumped off the page. Uh, but the other ones, um, you know, our, our group twos, when we look at the plots that we have going on, um, a lot of plots that, that Brian has sent in, uh, 85 to 90 average on you know our, our group twos and even down into our uh, late group ones. And that spread that, that's impressive is that we're talking a three bushel spread from, from a one nine to, a, to the two threes. So um, everything in that, in that framework seems to be playing extremely well, kind of regardless of where we're, where we're, where we're putting it. Um, you know, Gertis has had a plot, same boat there, 85 to 92 across all the different varieties. So um, our group, late group ones, group, group twos that we have going on in, in northern Iowa and up in the, the Minnesota and Wisconsin seem to be uh, playing extremely, extremely well this year. So we're really excited about that. Um, the other one that I thought was very interesting that Brian sent in was uh, Justin Burkholder, a dealer up in Minnesota, did some population trials. And... Uh, we saw a little bit of maybe some varieties like to be a little bit thicker than some others, but there is uh, there was some pretty conclusive data out there that uh, planting population can be can be lowered down. Something that we've we've talked about quite a bit, and and still holding some very good very good yields. So uh, we'll publish that data as the yield yield trials come out, um, as that gets uploaded through through our our website. You guys can take a look at that. Um, you know, the work that, that we're doing with Joe with Advanced Agrolytics, we're going to have a, a little bit more backing on to uh, this from a science science basis. So uh, really exciting stuff that's coming to, to you guys to the north that are, uh, are working with us. Ben has done a great job of picking out some new varieties. And, uh, and like I've said in the weeks prior, that the, the old dogs are still holding on too. Lynn, I wanted to mention uh, uh, a competitive agronomist from another seed company in northeast Iowa. Uh, was talking about yields and talking about sometimes they're consistent, sometimes they're inconsistent, and and uh, this particular representative said that every time that the yields were not consistent, in other words, they were lower than what the farmer expected, it was from white mold and sudden death. And again, um, our new seed treatment, starting line plus, uh, you know, starting line has the white mold component with heads up, but starting line plus you also add in the uh, sultro, and you're going to be able to control two of the diseases that potentially are showing up pretty broad scale uh, in northeast Iowa. So, uh, and that that comes standard R as an option as starting line plus for us. So, it's good good to know that uh, we've evolved with our seed treatment to keep up with what the problems are and the limiting yield factors out there. Some of the other companies, I can't speak for them. Very good. Ben? Well, a um, couple of things to note there from what you were talking about. The, the Chickasaws is a kind of a fun bean in the lineup from the aspect that when you look at that bean and the plot as you're driving down, down the rows, you can always pick the Chickasaw out because it looks like a, like a hedge tree or a hedge bush. It's almost a square mm -hmm. pattern for, for what that bean looks like. Holds a lot of beans on its branches. Um, the guys that are having really good luck with it are planting it at those lower planting populations that you're talking about hangs a lot of weight in its auxiliary branches. So And stands well with that too. It stands it stands very well in that hundred to hundred and twenty mm -hmm. planting population. It's not one that you're gonna to want to go put it out on your flat black most productive piece of dirt at hundred and forty thousand because with all those branches, 
it's not going to stand near as well. So, but it's phenomenal product. It, it's the second year in a row that it is showing up, number one, number two, number three, and and a lot of the plots out there. And you know, you talk about lowering your population. You know, most seed companies don't talk about that, but with the starting line seed treatment and starting line plus seed treatment, I mean, if you really want to pinch pennies, just lower your population. I mean, in other words, if you plant the same dollars per acre of our seed compared to a competitor that's cheaper, you're not going to see any difference in your stands and you're going to see better yields from our products. So I know farmers get hung up when they get down to that last $1, $2, $3, $4 an acre, whatever the number is, the bottom line with Mersman seeds. And I can tell you right now, from all of our preliminary germs that we're getting back right now, which again, other seed companies aren't talking about, uh, we're running 95 plus on our bin germ, so we, we think we're going to produce a, a above uh, average uh, germination crop this year for you, which uh, gets some bonus germination. So um, with inflation and high costs and everything, you know, pay attention to your population. This is a year that you can shave a little bit and, and, uh, and save a little. You know, you talked about those populations. We have, we have a farmer up by Burlington, Iowa that's been planting 70 to 80,000 uh, population for the last few years, 80 bushel beans every year. So, I mean, of course, you got to have wheat control, but it's good dirt, high management, uh, you know, so those are all things that go into play. Yep. Joe, you all also mentioned uh, white mold in the north, in, in Minnesota, northeast Iowa, and uh, Wisconsin. This kind of plays well. One of our wheat originators or one of the breeders that we talked to, he goes, when you think white mold, think wheat. So that kind of ties into one of the products that I wanted to talk about or highlight today. And I would like to mention uh, uh, Brett from uh, our uh, uh, kind of southeast Illinois. He's doing a lot of pattern ag testing uh, with customers and white mold showing up in southeast Illinois. And I can tell you that, and if you're not familiar with pattern ag, pattern ag is the DNA soil testing that shows up many, many diseases, whatnot, from a molecular level. And they're seeing white mold that far south. So as we suspect it, white mold is becoming a little bit of a yield robber from us in a large area. And uh, the new heads up component that, Ben, you added to our seed treatment this year is going to make a huge difference in our yields next year. So we're excited about the yields this year, but we don't know where they're going to go next year with this new seed treatment and, and the kind of protection that we're going to be offering. Correct. Correct. But one of the originators had said, you know, white mold, wheat, if white mold is something that you're fighting um, year after year after year, and it's something that you struggle with, you know, putting a wheat rotation into a corn, soybeans, wheat, corn, soybeans, wheat rotation is something to spread that risk out and diversify that risk. And one of the products that I want to highlight today is our Julie 11. Um, a lot of people are know the consistency and the high yield product that comes out of our Maddie 3. We've had that product for the past two years now. Uh, the Julia 11 is something that we launched this year. We had seed production of it last year. We launched it full scale this year and we have lots of great supply of the Julia 11. Um, it's a tinge longer season product, but I just wanted to read a couple of the uh, uh, packages that come along with it. It's complete package with the FBH1 gene, which means that we have uh, a gene for head scab. So we have very, very high tolerances to head scab. Uh, industry leading test weight. So when we say industry leading, that means that we are consistently in that uh, 60, potentially 61, 62 uh, pound test weight is something that is extremely achievable for the guys that are taking care of that crop. Excellent standability, responds well to high management, medium to medium early for ex excellent double crop options. That is for basically our area here in Southeast Iowa and South. It's not a great double crop option. We have ultra earlies for that as we get north. Um, this product ranked uh, number one at 110% in two-year data in the lower Midwest and 103% uh, two-year data in the upper Midwest. So the lower Midwest is classified as Missouri, Southern Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Kansas, and our upper Midwest data comes out of Northern Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ohio. So how that product did, that's two-year data, how that product did in our three-year data in our upper and lower Midwest, we are looking at uh, in 2020, the Julie 11 ran 91.6 compared to our Maddie at 85.4, both respectable yields. 2021, we're at 102.9 with our Julie 11, 102.2 in uh, 2021, extremely respectable yields. And last year, uh, our data rolled in at Julie 11 at 105.0 and the Maddie 3 at 106.8. So phenomenal data, phenomenal product. Um, I brand, brand post, new. Yep. 
brand new product. We'll post uh, all of this data that you guys can click on this link and see what uh, a little bit deeper dive into what that product looks like because uh, as you move north, it's going to be a high, high yielding product. So it's good supplies of uh, Maddie. It's good supplies of Julie. Still time to plant wheat. I mean, you can plant wheat as long as your soil temperature is 50 degrees. And so we're going to be warming the soil temperature up this weekend uh, across the, the whole area. Um, a lot of farmers are concerned about the dry weather and you know lack of subsoil moisture right now. Wheat makes sense. Also, lessens that much less work you got to do next spring. I'll manage fertilizer, herbicide costs, all that, and double crop. And uh, we're just starting to hear those double crop yields coming off now behind wheat, and I think they're going to be good. Yep, depending on the area and where the rainfall fell, we're we're we're, we're always excited about those extra that extra income that's coming off double crop. So that's one product that I wanted to highlight. Um, Again, great supply of that product. The next product, you know, you, we talk about Ch Chippewa is probably Interstate 80 and North. Mm -hmm. The the one that is popping that I wanted to highlight this uh, week in all of our uh, test plots that have been coming back out is the Monroe. Our new Monroe 2337E uh, variety. It is an STS line. It is a product that is consistently showing up, number one, number two, potentially number three. We've seen it in tougher soil types where 60 may take the top of the plot on, on maybe the uh, more drought prone acre. And uh, it's still hanging in there in the tops in the 90 plus bushel plots that are coming out. It's still right up there in the top as well. So excellent product. Um, it's a great fit for Iowa, Illinois. Uh, probably we, it's going to be a Nebraska product as well if, if the yield data keeps coming in. It's got Phytophthora RPS1K, which is the standard, almost the premium. It's one of the best Phytophthora genes out there. So if Phytophthora is something that you fight, there's only one gene that encompasses more races of resistance. Um, great tolerance to frog eye, SDS, brown semrot, which means that that product can move south pretty well. It's and got the disease, the disease package for that and north for that, for that matter. Um, and last year's testing is 103.3%. I see that not moving, but potentially even getting better for this year. So it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should probably post uh, a handful of the, the links that we have this year for uh, everything that's came in so far. We should probably get yield data shown here. Yeah. So. It's a very nice compliment to the Kennedy as we move forward to next year. The, the guys that like Kennedy that want to diversify their, their variety mix that this Monroe definitely should garner some serious attention well not only that but when the bean dies down it's it's got an extra kick heart almost above what a light tawny is mm. it is a it is a landlord bean you want to wrap that around your landlord's house because when they when they dry down they're probably the prettiest beans out in the field so those are a couple of things that i wanted to highlight this week we, we got a lot of good things rolling and we're excited thanks ben yep turk big news is mississippi river um uh, it's actually small news, right? It's small news, <laughs> yeah, little news. Hardly any water. So no water, and, and it doesn't look like that problem is going to get any better anytime soon, and that's a big concern uh, as we start looking forward at exports and everything else going down the road. So we're, uh, we're really between a rock and a hard place on, on this river system. Yeah, my brother Henry was saying that normally the grain hoppers come with grain to the elevators and then go next door and pick up fertilizer and, and go back and they're coming down empty to pick up fertilizer because the basis is so bad and so everybody's putting them in bins and planning to store and until this uh, this uh, river situation changes I guess. Yeah so there's uh, the markets have have held in unbelievably well in the face of harvest pressure I mean we're at peak um, harvest pressure right now and the basis is holding in there um, as far as um, getting getting uh, stuff in the bins back and I think what's going to happen is is everybody's storing stuff as much as they can and they're not taking it to the river and uh, to try and get rid of it because the basis is bad for going down the river but uh, I, I just don't think that uh, I think this is going to have long-term effects uh, next summer and next spring, especially if we can get the river level up, it's going to be a, a lot of people uh, trying to hit that river open market if we can get there now. If we don't get that rain 
all winter long and it stays low, that could be a bad, bad thing. So processors and these new uh, uh, re re regenerative fuel uh, plants that are opening up for soybeans, oh, yeah. they're going to be a, a savior uh, for uh, uh, some farmers uh, to be able to have a place to market beans. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, we did hear that the one at Shell Rock uh, uh, was well, taking beans, so they're, they are uh, bringing beans in to prime the pump, so to speak. So I don't, I don't think they're going to start processing anything anytime soon, but uh, maybe next after the first year, but uh, they are taking beans in and up there. That's great. So, Lynn and I did make a trip down to southern Illinois this week, and uh, one of the common themes that's happening down there that never happens is they are piling beans outdoors mm -hmm. and you know it's not uncommon to pile corn but they're actually piling beans outdoors yeah. because nobody has any space for them wow yeah. yep. so the the other thing i wanted to talk about is um if you run if you've been running your cooling fans to cool your crop off get them shot off because this weekend is supposed to be really hot for a few days and so wait until it cools back off sounds like by the end of next week we're going to get some cooler weather again and Possibly a chance of some rain coming in first part of the next week, but uh, let's let's all pray that we get that. Thanks, Turk. Well, that brings us to the corny jokes. So I got a couple of them, and we'll see what you think of them. Um, these here I came up with on my own, so I'll take the blame or the credit, depending upon how you feel about them. <laughs> okay. Uh, a young man's girlfriend broke up with him when she found out he only had nine toes. She was lactose intolerant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I wanted to tell you something. I don't know about you, but it seems like I only get sick on weekdays. That's the only time I get sick is on a weekday. I must have weekend immune system. <laughs> Mm -hmm. A weekend mm -hmm. immune system. Mm -hmm. I came up with that myself. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, we better, this will get the farmers back out in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching today, and uh, we hope that your family is safe and healthy, and uh, hope that harvest is going well for you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.